Hey guys, Brett here from Silver Screen Media. Today we're going to be comparing a brand new MacBook Pro Retina with an early 2011 MacBook Pro. So first thing we're going to compare is thinness. Now the MacBook Pro Retina is a full pound lighter than the MacBook Pro. And it's 0.71 inches. It's quite a bit thinner than the MacBook Pro's 0.95 inches. So as you can see on the MacBook Pro, the early 2011 edition, it's got the security lock and the optical drive on this side. Now on the MacBook Pro Retina, both of those features are entirely gone. In place on that side, you have an SD card slot, a USB 3.0, and then an HDMI port in the middle between those two. So on the left side of the MacBook Pro Retina, you've got your headphone out, you've got the USB 3.0, another one, so that makes two, and you've got two Thunderbolt ports on this side, as well as a thinner redesigned MagSafe adapter. Now on the MacBook Pro, you've got your audio out for your headphones, audio in for a microphone, the SD card slot is on this side, you got two USB 2.0 slots, Thunderbolt port, FireWire, Ethernet, and MagSafe. So looking at them here, the two displays look pretty similar, but the MacBook Pro Retina screen has a resolution of 2880 by 1800, which is just unheard of, uh, while the MacBook Pro still has a respectable screen resolution of 1440 by 900. But the display contest is definitely going to go to the MacBook Pro Retina. Alright, so we've gone through the displays of these two computers, and the Retina was a clear winner. Next, we're going to go to upgradeability and repairability, which the Retina really doesn't do too hot with. You really can't change out anything in the computer once you bought it. You can't change the screen out if it goes bad. You can't replace any RAM or you know any of the battery packs. It's pretty much as it is. While the MacBook Pro you can switch out all of that. You can change the screen out if it goes bad. You can replace RAM or upgrade it. You can even switch out the optical drive for a second hard drive if you want to. So it's a lot more upgrade friendly and the repairs are going to cost a lot less. So if you get a MacBook Pro right now, that's really something you have to consider too. We're going to do the performance test now. We pulled up both of the About This Mac windows. You can see that the MacBook Pro has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 2.2 gigahertz Intel Core i7. So it's got the Sandy Bridge processor in it. Both of them have about the same graphics card. And uh, the MacBook Pro Retina also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, but it has a 2.6 gigahertz Intel i7 Ivy Bridge processor. So it's got a little bit more processing power, and it also has a solid state drive. So next test we did was a benchmark test. The MacBook Pro scored 11,052, while the MacBook Pro Retina scored 12,869. All right, so as you can see by these numbers, both computers have amazing processors, amazing speed, and they're really both very powerful machines that can do anything you throw at them. It all really comes down to price, which is pretty tough to swallow. The MacBook Pro starts off about $1,700, but can easily be upgraded to over $2,000 while the MacBook Pro Retina starts over 2000 and can be easily upgraded to 3000 So either way, you're going to be throwing down a lot of money for these computers. Final conclusion, the MacBook Pro Retina is an amazing machine. Engineering-wise, it's incredible. Display-wise, it's just incredible too. It's definitely a computer of the future with a solid-state drive in it and all that RAM and display power. The MacBook Pro is still an awesome option if you're, if you're looking for a used one, you can probably find one cheap now. So it's an awesome option, still great for processing and editing videos, photos, or doing design work. Either way, it comes down to your price point, and if you're ready to upgrade to a MacBook Pro Retina, you won't be disappointed. But you won't be disappointed in the MacBook Pro either. They're both awesome. Thanks for watching. Catch us next time.